Hello and welcome to the video. This is the Maiden Flight and my full review of the OMP ZMO VTOL plane. Now I had a look at this uh, only fairly recently and we did the unboxing but we've had some beautiful weather here in the UK so we've had a chance to fly it. For me I'm really interested in how stable is it in the hover, how does the throttle work, how are the transition from hover to forward flight, how is it in transitioning back, what's it like to fly as a regular plane when it's acting as a twin and also does the return to home work as well. Now this is a slightly different model and it's got some changes from some of the prototypes that you may have seen already on YouTube. So what have they been doing in those four months to get it sorted? Now there were two great questions on that original video that I did. The first of which was asking about receiver types. Now the way it comes uh, out of the box or the way I got mine was it works with the DJI goggles of course. It's a DJI Air unit, the full Air unit in the one that I had here. But it also needed the DJI FPV controller in order to bind to that air unit and to fly it and that's the way that we've been flying it here. However lots of questions around well can I use this radio or that radio. Now the air unit talks regular S bus to the flight controller that's in it so if you have a receiver that can talk S bus then in theory you can connect it up. I have been feeding this back to OMP Hobby. Uh, I think it would be great if there was a, either an optional cable or even a cable in the box that allowed you to plug in a regular S bus style receiver, you know, the servo connection with a five volts ground and an S bus so you could just power whatever you wanted. I think that would be a useful thing. At the moment, there isn't the option to do that without you kind of making up your own little bit of wiring. It would be nice for it to be a little bit more plug and play. Second question that I got quite a lot was, well, why do you need a VTOL? Well, if you have lots of open space and you have enough room to both take off and to land the model without getting in trouble with trees or things around you, then you know what? VTOL is probably not going to be particularly interesting. But what VTOL gives you is the ability to both take off and land in a very small space, literally within two meters uh, and that's what I'm really interested in VTOL for. I don't always get to fly in those places that are perfectly manicured and have lovely smooth areas. Sometimes it's muddy fields, sometimes it's the edge of an area and I want to be able to get the plane back and to land it. You ideally need a couple of hundred yards in order to make an approach and a landing and if that is into very barren rocky ground that's going to rip up the model that's not a great situation not everybody has access to a flying field that's going to allow you to have those long takeoffs and landings and if you do that's great but if you don't VTOL opens up a whole range of places that you can go and fly and when you're in fixed wing mode it's far more efficient and you get much longer out of the battery so let me give you the highlights. If you don't want to watch the whole Maiden video, you can just get an idea of what I found. Um, first of all is the manual that comes with it. Seems very basic, but actually that is all you need to know. It looks like OMP Hobby have worked very hard to make it almost foolproof to try and fly this thing without making a mess. There is an on-screen display in the FPV goggles. Some people were missing that in the original video. They have got an on-screen display that is populated around the outside of the DJI HD goggles. So once you've got your goggles connected, you'll be able to see things like distance, direction to home, height, speed, GPS location, number of satellites, all that goodness. You will need to do a compass calibration before you fly. Uh, that is by holding the sticks into the middle top position on your DJI FPV controller if that's what you're using and that will then allow you to go through the usual little compass dance uh, once you've done that in the location it should be good for the whole day arming is done via the sticks so there's no switch for that it's the old school Ardu pilot style arming where you hold the sticks to the lower outer position that then starts the motors you then have to increase the throttle to over 50% very quickly otherwise it will automatically disarm and then it will rise into the air. You need a reasonable amount of height to transition then into uh, regular fixed wing flying. A separate little switch does that. Once you've got into fixed wing, the transition from hovering into forward flight, fixed wing flight, is really, really smooth. It doesn't really lose a lot of altitude. You'll see that in a moment. It looks beautiful. Flying then in fixed wing mode, uh, it seems that the throttle control, just as in the hover, isn't directly related to how the model's flying. There's kind of 
appears to be like two speed settings, one above 50% throttle, one below. Even if you close throttle all the way off, as we tried, uh, you can't get it to stop because it actually continues to fly. So rather than you having direct control over the speed of the motors, that's a little bit trickier. And in fact, I've been trying to get a lot of um, follow footage, but I've really struggled to find it because it's kind of cruising at 60 kilometers an hour and the kind of endurance quads that I've been taking to the field to try and chase it with, uh, I've been struggling to keep up with the thing. So it, it does motor when it's in fixed wing mode. It can cover quite a bit of ground. Transitions back from fixed wing mode to hover mode are a little bit more exciting. Uh, the wing seems to kind of stall at just the same time as the motors are kind of, have kind of come up and then transition to hovering. Uh, so you tend to get a little bit of a wobble. You tend to hear the motors kind of really revving to kind of get it all under control. First time that happens, it's a little bit of an exciting experience, to say the least. You think something horrible has happened, but once it, you've done it a couple of times, it's pretty standard. It's the only part of the transitions and flying that isn't absolutely buttery smooth. And finally, before we jump onto the footage, return to home works really nicely as well. You're going to see that in the example from the footage, now the footage actually is from the maiden flight that I'm about to show you. The return to home brought it back and it was within about 10 meters of the arming location, uh, but it was descending down towards the trees that are along one side of the field we were flying in course it's going to try and land in the trees but uh, even though it was still in return to home I still had the ability with the FPV uh, controller from DJI to kind of bring it away from the trees and it landed and as soon as it's on the ground it disarmed just like it does normally. So let's do the maiden footage and I'll kind of do my last thoughts after that. So sticks into the magic position. Oh yeah it's going green. Do I hold that there the whole time? No no let go. I'm turning it. It's still green. <laughs> oh, there we go, it's red. Hey. God, this is dangerous near the pot, isn't it? That is a bit, isn't it? <laughs> okay, now I think it said it's done. Yeah. As long as it isn't amber, you're all right. Okay. I'm sure it'll be fine. Yeah. Now we hold it, we arm it in the same way as most RD pilot stuff. The motor's running. Okay, so we've got to take off within a couple of seconds. So we'll arm it, raise the throttle. The sheep like it. It's alive. Okay, so the good news is, it hovers, does it yaw, so it goes left and right, it yaws, they do look weird don't they, yeah. it's like a plane shouldn't plane do that. Stops, yeah. Okay, so far so good. Now, should we take it further up and then try a transition? That's good. Get a little bit further away from us. <laughs> <laughs> Not that I don't trust it. That looks weird. It does, doesn't it? Okay, we'll climb, because obviously... Up we go. Are you happy if I go on FPV? Definitely, yeah, I've got it. Altitude, 20 meters, let's get a little bit more. Thirty-one meters, thirty-two. Is she getting quite small? No, no, it's just it's good size actually. Just, uh... Okay. When we get to about over fifty meters, I think we'll give it a shot. Ready for transition? Ready. Here we go. Oh my lord, we're going forwards. Uh, we're a plane! Nice. Wow. That takes off, doesn't it? <laughs> really? 
that felt very stable. Yeah, no, it looked too like that as well. How did it look to you? Yeah, it looked very stable, yeah. Oh, wow. Okay, this is um, so about 50% throttle. I'm going to lose a little bit of height. So this just feels like a really well behaved twin now. We do um, a pass. We can actually see it properly. Wow. Nice. Zero drama. Yeah. Lots of things in the on screen display. Okay, so it says it's got two modes. We have like a, a slow mode, which is what I've put it into now. So that slow mode, is that got a fixed throttle setting, has it? Yeah, we'll, we'll give that a little bit of a test. Still not slow though, is it? No, not at all. Excuse my runny nose, everybody. I'm very stable, self level is good. Now I'm going to come back and put it in hover mode and start the recording because interestingly the DJI Air unit has not automatically started recording. Now, according to this, we need to be below, so we'll get another, again, we'll get a little bit more height. We need to be below 50% throttle. Okay, you got it? Got it. And we just flick it into hover mode. Wow, that was good. Ooh. There was a little bit of a wibble there. Yeah, it was a little bit. Just trying to stabilise itself a bit, wasn't it, as the transition? It was. Okay, so in my goggles, let me just see what, where the record button is. There we go, we're actually recording now. So, let me just kind of give you a bird's eye view. Are you okay with it? Yeah. Still good? It's good. So, let's transition again. So we need this, it's this little switch here that we need to just put into the middle position. And away we go. It's really funny, you can hear it. It's almost like a kick yeah, it down is, it? or kick up <laughs> of a gear, isn't it? It just goes pretty much silent, doesn't it? As yeah, as it, it just goes silent when she's out of... Um, that kind of mode. Okay. So again, let me do. I've got it on the, the lower speed setting. I think it's designed so that you can't stall it. <laughs> <laughs> Even that is not. It's not slow, is it's it? Not slow. No. It's incredibly stable, though. Yeah. I'm really happy with this. I've mm. got loads of sheep in the field going from one to the other. <laughs> incredibly stable. The only issue I've got with this at the moment is we only have the two modes if you don't count return to home. So there's no um, and also the distance and direction to home arrow is kind of working but it's a little bit sluggish. Wow, that is lovely. Do we risk A return to home. Should we give it a shot? Oh, no. Okay, here we go. We're going to return to home. It. Return to home engaged. So she's swinging round. Yeah. Okay, she's lined up on those pretty well. Yeah. Still in. Uh, plane mode. Oh, is that the transition? Yeah. Yeah, I would say. Whoa, that transition back to. Uh, yeah, it does it. It's just kind of a bit violent, really, isn't it? It kind of. Right, I'm, I'm off goggles now. I'm watching it as well. Yeah. Now the only issue I've got is that is not where we started. It's not very close. It's coming down near the tree. Yeah. 
I'm going to take over because yeah, uh, it's that a little bit too close for comfort, isn't it? Really? No, but it, it's kind of more there. Yeah. Okay, so you can actually finesse it in the last little bit. Wow, that's actually pretty cool. Right, I think we're going to charge the battery, and you can have a go. Yeah, you fancy that? Uh, definitely, yeah. Looks great. So OMP Hobby is a vendor that is well respected for making quality kit, both fixed wings and helicopters as well. And there's a lot of quality pieces inside this model and the performance of it is very nice. The throttle on the radio isn't directly controlling stuff. It feels like it's the standard, you know, above 50% is going to make you rise, below 50% is going to make you sink when it's in hover mode. The two uh, airspeed modes are pretty much set. And it is an awful lot of fun to fly about. Obviously, you have all the DJI FPV goodness as well. And you can put that um, GoPro camera in the front. And it is a lot of fun and very impressive to actually see this thing take off and do all the transitions. It is very uneventful. The only thing that makes you, uh, you know, kind of hold your breath for a second is that transition back from forward flight back to hover, where there's that little moment where it has to kind of catch itself. Now, one of the reasons that it was so tricky for me to get the follow footage is that we were also struggling with the height. The height in the on-screen display in this is displayed in meters. The speed is displayed in kilometers an hour. I'm a UK pilot, so I like miles per hour and I like feet um, for altitude. And that is what all my OSDs are set for. So when we were trying to get the chase footage, it was really tricky because my friend was flying in meters, I was flying in feet, and we were trying to have to do that. One of the things with this is that there is no customization options on this model. You can't go in and change the on-screen display, you can't move things around, you can't change any of the flight modes, you can't change how the switches work, that is all set. So if you're looking for a ready-to-fly model and you don't want to mess around with any of that stuff, touch a computer and flash firmware and you want to get into all that, and I know lots of pilots out there are in that camp, then this allows you to get and try a VTOL without having to play. Personally, for someone like me, I would have liked the ability to do things with just the on-screen display would have been a big benefit and actually help with uh, some of the customization. I can understand why OMP Hobby don't want to give you access to all the guts to potentially then change something that makes it crash and hopefully there will be kits that they will do in future or Pixhawk versions of this for uh, you know advanced pilots who like what like me who want to play with the software and to change things around and install their own flight controllers so before I finish the video, I do need to give a huge shout out to Steve at Scotia RC, who was the gentleman who started this conversation with me about getting this VTOL in to have a try. Up there in Scotland, Steve is a full reseller of OMP technology as well as other things. So I'll put a link down below if you want to go and check out his store. There's only a handful of things that I would draw your attention to with this particular model, apart from obviously the price, which will put it out of the reach of many hobbyists. First of all, as I've mentioned, is an S-Bus cable in the box would be handy for those without a DJI FPV controller and making sure that all the spares are available easily too. It would be good to see a kit version of this available for those who don't want to use the DJI FPV system or want to use another flight controller where they can get into the settings. For this version, I would also like some way to change things just like the way the on-screen display is laid out, where the pieces are, but also the metrics and units used so I can have miles per hour and feet for the altitude. Only other thing really for this is that you do need the weight in the nose to get the central gravity right. If you have a GoPro, it's going to be fine. And lastly, unfortunately, with the GoPro in the nose, there isn't any way to access the buttons. So once you have popped it in there and done up a couple of screws, you're going to have to use your phone or a remote control to start and stop recording and access how everything works. This is a simple to use and simple to operate, ready to fly model that goes straight out of the box. It flies great in fixed wing mode, it hovers great, the transitions are fine, and also things like the return to home uh, seems to work pretty well as well. So this has been an awful lot of fun and really interesting to play with. 
So if you've been looking for something like that, this is a great option. I've been feeding back some of my thoughts on this model back to OMP Hobby directly, and hopefully they will continue to invest and create VTOL models that also allow pilots to get into the guts and have a bit of a play as well, and provide a little bit of flexibility in the future stuff they bring out for pilots like me and some of you who are watching who want to play with the software too. Thank you for spending your time today watching that video. You can find me in all the usual places on social media. And if you're trying to learn about a subject, then check out the playlist. All of my videos are organized into easy to follow playlists that if you're trying to learn a topic, will take you from the basics right the way through to some pretty advanced stuff.